In this Proteus DS training session, we're going to go through some fundamentals and getting started with Proteus DS Simulation Toolbox. Here's an agenda. We're going through a couple of fundamentals, some basic simulation controls, and other user interface controls with Proteus DS Simulation Toolbox. When you first open up Proteus DS Simulation Toolbox, this is what you'll see. There's a banner on the top with a number of commonly used options, and we'll go through a couple of those um, through the course of this presentation. There's an input file area here where you put in properties and a tree where you can select different uh, parameters like the environmental properties, simulation properties, and the properties for the different dynamic objects you have in the, sim in the simulation setup. When we talk about properties, these might be a number, it might be text. Uh, these are the inputs into the, the software where you're setting physical properties and other settings. Very commonly, there's relationships between these inputs, and we call these master and follower uh, relationships. Oftentimes, when you want to specify a current profile, there'll be some follower properties you have to specify, like the current speed and, and things like that. We open up Proteus DS Simulation Toolbox. You'll see also that there's some information on the bottom left-hand corner here. It gives you some information that's straight out of the manual on what kind of uh, current profile options are available. And sometimes there'll be usage, usage tips as well to give you some guidance on what properties to set. So look here for some information in this, in this window. All of the master and follower properties are located in the manual, so if you go to view manual, you'll see, for example, for environment, the, all the input properties are listed here, along with the same information that shows up in this window. Okay, we're going to set up a very basic simulation with one of the simplest dynamic objects, one of the simpl simplest D objects, the point mass. To get a sneak preview of what the world looks like that you're going to be simulating, we use the visualizer. It's completely empty right now. But you can see this reference frame. So this is the global reference frame. Red corresponds to the global X frame direction, which aligns to zero degrees heading north. Green corresponds to the global frame y-axis, positive 90 degrees east, and positive z goes down. It starts off at the uh, default mean water surface and points down to the seabed. So there's a button on the toolbar here to create our point mass. So we'll click on that. You can change the name of the, the object if you want. We'll just leave that default and all the other properties default as well. And you can see using the mouse wheel I can zoom in and just take a look at that point mass that we've created. So it's got a diameter of 0.25 meters, a density of 500. Uh, that's less dense than water, so I'd expect it to, to float at the water surface. You can define the state for all the objects that uniquely defines where it is in the, the virtual space in Proteus. This is typically the position and velocity. And then we're going to go over some basic simulation controls. What I want to do is just put it up a little bit up in the air We'll click on the state button here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it minus five meters up in the air and then we'll go generate. So we'll just zoom out a little bit and you can see it's up in the air. Uh, before we run this tutorial, we've got to save it. So I'm going to make a folder here, training, and then I'm going to call this point mass float. Okay. The default simulation time is 60 seconds. I'm not going to change anything on that. We'll just go run. It's a pretty fast simulation. Now if we go to post PDS, this is our 3D visualizer. Uh, again, just use the zoom in with the mouse wheel. You can see there's our point mass. And if we hit the play button, you can see it fall into the water and then bob back up to the surface. So it's a pretty basic example of just something that happens. I'm going to close this. Uh, now, errors and simulation feedback. So if you've put in an invalid property, you'll get an error. 
we're going to click reset. We, note, note we can't change any properties uh, once the simulation has been run. This is all grayed out. This is to indicate that you, you can't change any of the input files that are associated with some um, simulation data. If you go to simulation and then results folder, you'll see we've got all our input files here for all of the different entities and then the data is in the simulation data is in the results folder. So in point mass one we can see the results text file that has the time and position and velocity history of, of this uh, uh, through the simulation. So, but once we click on reset, it's going to erase all that information. Okay, and we're starting again. If we put in an invalid property, so the range here says you, can, you can't put in any negative numbers, 0 to something like a million density, default value of uh, um, 500. We go minus 500 and try to run it. We get an error saying the reported error is an invalid uh, property outside of the allowable range. So it's helping to point you where there's an issue. So we'll change that again to 500 and you can see we can run again. So, just a quick review, uh, we were looking at some fundamentals of working with Proteus DS Simulation Toolbox, Simulation Controls, and Basic User Interface Controls. So, thanks for watching this training video. Remember, you can always send in questions to our email address, support at dsaocean.com, for questions on working with the software like Proteus DS. Thanks for watching.